Steve, Matt, thanks for your time. It's your Melbourne Cup week, your Cox Plate week, your Golden Slipper week, whatever you might call it here. And you've got an anxious few days. You're not quite sure, Steve, if you're going to get one of your stable favourites, Scolopini, into the Stradbroke. Yeah, no, that's right. Like we're uh, we're sitting in that position at the moment where we, you know, are going to be one of the emergencies. But look, he's uh, he's going super. This old horse, he's, he's racing in uh, probably career best form. Um, you know, his his last two runs have been in, in the toughest company he's he's ever competed against, and he, he's held his held his own against those. So, um, you know, to get into a handicap Stradbroke um, back down to fifty three would be a huge plus for him. So, uh, look, uh, Matty and I have definitely got everything crossed to uh, hope we uh, get a chance there on Saturday. You hope it doesn't come to it, Matt, but there is a plan B if you don't get into the big one. Yeah, look, the Wayne Wilson, another a mile race there, listed race on the day, can be a backup if he wasn't able to, to gain a start in the Stradbroke and um, you know, another race that he'd uh, you know be nice and competitive in. We haven't tried him out to the mile in a long while now, but um, he's probably getting a little bit older now and if he's ever going to sort of run the mile out strong, sort of this is going to be the time. We're sitting next to Tumbler Ridge's box, which reminds me that uh, the Tumbler will be going around Saturday as well, Matt. Yeah, definitely. Look, obviously we made a little bit, made a call not to run in the in the Morton there from a bad alley on Saturday, and um, yeah, saving him for this race. He's probably going to be better weighted. Only um, obviously he was only spotting the likes of Kementari two two kilos there on Saturday just gone. So a race like the Hinkler is probably more more sort of his sort of grade. Um, but look, he's he's going fantastic the horse, and it's a, a perfect lead in three weeks into the Glasshouse. Um, Steve, going back to September 2020, you decided to make the partnership a formal one and go from Matt being assistant trainer to being co-trainer as well. Um, obviously, uh, you sort of find your groove how that's going to work really well. Not a great change other than, I guess, titles in some way. Yeah, no, definitely. Even from early days, I, I put it to Matty that, you know, partnership uh, was definitely on the cards. It's one of those things that any stable, you know, you're not, uh, you might be the man front and centre with their name up there, but um, it's definitely always a, a very much a, a team uh, team effort, you know, and you're only as good as those people that are, are working with you. So, um, you know, as I say, you know, to see Matty sort of you know, put in the hard yards for those few years, you know, in his assistant trainer role, uh, obviously showed that he really wanted this. And look, it's uh, it's worked so well for us. And, you know, Matty's, uh, as I say, was always an integral part right through, um, even before the partnership come on board. Your strike rate. I mean, that's something to be proud of, Steve. And it's something you've had going way back. And I'm talk about your background in Townsville as well. But strike rate's really important to attracting new customers as well. Yep, it's one of those things that, uh, you know, strike rate's the only, you know, real measure that you can use uh, on a stable that can't can sort of compete, you know, with, with big numbered stables. You know, it's probably one of those things that, you know, Matt and I always try and concentrate so much on on placing the horse as well. I think it's a big thing with horses too to, to try and, you know, develop them and develop their confidence, give them confidence before you sort of take that next step up with them. Keen to talk a little bit about your background. So Townsville born and bred, your dad yep. trained up there, you you had a stint running the family stable up there, but uh, you've spent a lot of time elsewhere as well, haven't you? Like Melbourne, Singapore, Sydney, got time with Gay Waterhouse. Uh, obviously, you sort of grew up with horses in my life. Uh, you know, dad was a trainer up there and on mum's side of the family, you know, I went back generations, sort of bookmakers and trainers and all that kind of thing. So, you know, it was good. Uh, always wanted to sort of branch out and, and, and see see what things were like working in, in Southern Stables. So, you know, I spent some time down the Gold Coast working for Alan Bailey and Gillian Heinrich and then went down to uh, Trevor Bailey, Alan's stable uh, down in Melbourne and then obviously spent some time in Singapore and, you know, come back from there and spent some time in Sydney as well. And then, you know, Dad wanted to retire from training up in Townsville. So I went up there and uh, and took out the licence in my own right and spent a couple of years up there before uh, deciding to come down to Brisbane with uh, five horses. It was supposed to be a, a two-month stint over the summer and, uh, and never went home. So, no, it's worked out really well. Well, tell us about that. You brought the five horses down and they went so well. Uh, you were going to head back home, but someone tugged your coat. Obviously, uh, Kiss Me Katie had won her first two starts down here and uh, go-karted, had uh, had the three runs and, and uh, run a couple of placings and was knocking on the door to win. So certainly uh, going too well to take back to Townsville. So I got on really, really well with Brian Smith while I'd been here in, in Brisbane and uh, actually approached Brian one morning at track work and said to him, look, will, will you take these two horses on? And he initially said yes to me and sort of walked away and come back a couple of minutes later and sort of said, you stay down here, boy, like you have a go, like don't you go home. And uh, look, it was something that definitely uh, gave me the spur along to, to decide to stay down here.
Yeah, I love that story. Uh, and to you, Matt, I mean, the surname Hoisted, it's <clears throat> it's part of racing fabric here in Australia. And you are related to Bon and Bob going way back somewhere. Yeah, this was always always having on both sides, my family being a Hoisted uh, and a Hickmont as well. So I was always always going to be in the industry. And um, my dad trained a, trained a small team at, at Wangaratta there where, where we grew up prior to moving to Melbourne. And um, yeah, couldn't think of doing anything different. And you had a fair bit of time down in Melbourne too, didn't you? Including Lloyd Williams, Mike Moroni. Did you get a bit of time at the the absolute palace that was Macedon Lodge? Yeah, I did. So yeah, I did did four years there with Lloyd Williams as a as an early teenager, and it was yeah a, a great time to be there with some some really really good horses in the stable then. So I did two years at their at their Flemington base prior to doing two years at Macedon Lodge, and. Um, yeah, as you said, it's just unbelievable and it was really good for my my early development, um, you know, within the industry being from a small town, um, you know, with a, a with a small string of horses with my dad and just being able to see that just really helped round me out as a, um, you know, as overall within the in my learning development and then being able to go to Mike Moroni's and spend five years there was was really good prior to moving up here to here to Queensland. Steve, the facilities here are top shelf, aren't they? Uh, you've been here since they opened in 2017-ish? Yeah, look, absolutely. Look, we uh, we moved in straight away once these stables were ready. So um, we grew in size, obviously, from from the uh, the 24 boxes we, we initially had sort of in the old stables uh, to be able to get two full barns here. And even since then, we've, we've branched out a little bit more. So we've got 57 in horses horses in work at the moment and look they've uh the horses do really really well in here it's obviously a, a lovely sort of open stable complex and you know obviously got a a good mix of facilities here um at eagle farm you know everything that we really need to be able to train the horses and obviously uh as, as a metropolitan stable their ultimate goal is to uh to, to have as many Metro horses as we can, those horses that compete on uh, on Wednesdays and Saturdays. Matt, uh, nice win with Stroll last Saturday. I know you had your ups and downs on the day, but uh, a promising two-year-old that could develop into an even better three-year-old. Yeah, most definitely. She's, uh, you know, just from day one, she's just been a filly that just just had it from the first moment we put a saddle on her. She's she's just got the most effortless action and, and everything she does is is that and, and so effortless. So she's one we've always had a had a very big opinion of. We've sort of been pretty vocal in saying that, but um, it's really good. It was obviously a you know, high price yearling that through proven thoroughbreds had, had bought their most expensive yearling to date. So it's a big weight off our shoulders getting that early stakes win and having that um, you know, ultimate black type on her page. Is there another horse or two to follow out of the stable? Yeah, I think coming out of last Saturday's meeting, um, shooting for gold, he was obviously a little bit unlucky there in the in the Morton Cup, and yeah, he's a he's a horce that's still you know very much lightly raced. Um, you know, I think in the in the sort of coming seasons, he can hopefully continue to improve, and you know, hopefully this time last uh, next next season, sorry, you know, he can be playing a more of a part in some of these bigger bigger races come our Winter Carnival, and probably another one the likes of um, Uncommon James. He's one we haven't seen for for about twelve months, winning on Stradbroke Day last year in a in a listed race as a two year old. He was only at only his third start. He'll be back at the races in a couple of weeks after a long layoff, and he's one that hopefully can come back and, um, you know, if he can come back in as good a good a form as he was last in that last first racing preparation he had, then he's, um, you know, in for, in for a bright future. Well, thanks very much for your time. It's been lovely to learn a little bit more about you fellas, and uh, we'll be ticking them off one by one as the scratchings hopefully come out and you can get Scolopini into the Stradbroke. Best of luck. All right, Thank thanks you. so much.